How do you recover the lost year? You're a voice actor. You're an entrepreneur. You're a VOpreneur. Welcome to the Everyday VOpreneur Podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. Your voiceover demos are your number one marketing tool, and you need to display them on your website in a way that works on any device or browser. VoiceSam is the player producers love. Plus, it offers tools that can improve your email signature, quickly create a one-page website, and much more. Sign up now at voicesam.com slash markscott and get three months of the bass player for the price of one. That's voicesam.com slash markscott for full details and to sign up. The Vopreneur Podcast. Hey, it doesn't suck. Not as funny as Conan. Not as cute as Seth Meyers. Not as smart as Colbert. But he's one of us, and that counts for something. Here's Mark Scott, the original Everyday Veopreneur. Hey, what's up, and welcome to another episode of the Everyday Veopreneur podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. I'm Mark Scott, the original Everyday Veopreneur, here to help you with the business and marketing side of voiceover, the one that doesn't always get talked about, but is often the one that we struggle with the most. And that's the subject that I love diving into on the Everyday Veopreneur podcast. Before we get into this week's episode, a couple of things I want to say. First and foremost, thank you so much to everyone who is leaving reviews on Apple Podcasts. Those reviews are greatly appreciated. They help other people to find the podcast. And hey, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes it's nice just to get a little pat on the bum and know that I'm doing a good job. So Thank you once again for taking the time to leave those reviews at Apple Podcasts, and I would appreciate if you would keep doing that. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Wherever fine podcasts are given away for free, that way you never have to miss another episode of the Everyday Vopreneur Podcast. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, it's everywhere, it's out there. And of course, you can also check out the archives, listen to any episode anytime by jumping onto the website at vopreneur.com. So 2020, the lost year, that is kind of how most people feel about this year. And not just voice actors, but just people in general. You know, we're, we're all running our disaster bingo cards, waiting to see which thing is going to happen next, which unexpected, unimaginable, ridiculous, outrageous thing is going to happen next on the 2020 bingo card. This has been a tough year. For many of us in the industry, we've never lived through a complete global economic shutdown before. We've never had to figure out what that means for our business. We've never had to figure out how to recover with that in our business. And so it's an interesting, challenging, frustrating, overwhelming, but also exciting and creative time. Because the voice actors that are still doing very well in their businesses are the ones who have learned how to pivot. They're the ones who have learned how to adapt to the circumstances around them to try to figure out how to move forward, maybe in a different direction, maybe trying a different strategy, trying a different approach, reaching out to different types of customers, exploring different genres or different industries, different sectors, doing what they have to do to still try to find work. And the fact of the matter is, there are a lot of voice actors that are still out there and still working every single day, despite the fact that there is a pandemic going on. And so what I want to encourage you with first is I think it's time that we change the narrative. We need to stop with this whole 2020 lost year narrative, because the more that we tell ourselves that, the more that we believe it and the more likely that we are to just give up. And maybe you're already there. Maybe you've seen your business fall off so significantly that you've already given up. Maybe you don't know if it's recoverable. Maybe you're just going to shut it down and try again when the pandemic is over. And I think that that's a really dangerous thing to do. And I think part of it is a byproduct of this narrative, this narrative that everything that is going to go wrong is going to go wrong this year, that the year is lost, that it's a write-off. Let's just cut our losses, wait for 2021. And I just think that's a really dangerous narrative. And so the first thing that I want to encourage you with, we're now in mid-September, but we've still got time. There's still three and a half months left in the year. There's still an opportunity to salvage this year. There's still an opportunity to accomplish great things in your business. There's still an opportunity to recover from a pandemic, to pick up your bootstraps, 
and get back to work. And so what I want to talk to you about today specifically is setting some objectives for yourself. Because with clear objectives, now you've got something that you can focus on. And really, what we all need right now is something to focus on that has nothing to do with the pandemic. Something to focus on that has nothing to do with 2020, the lost year. And so one of the things that I want to encourage you to spend some time doing over the next week or two is really allowing yourself to think about what is my primary objective? What is it that I want to accomplish with what is left of this year? What is it that I want to see done? When December 31st rolls around and we're spending time with family and maybe friends on New Year's Eve, what do you want to be able to say that you accomplished at the end of the year? What do you want to be able to say that, you know what, I got this done despite everything else that was happening? What is your primary objective? Or maybe... The question is, what are your primary objectives? Maybe there's more than one thing that you're going to try to accomplish. And I'm talking about, are you going to complete a new demo? Are you going to launch a new website? Are you going to put on a big marketing push? Are you going to try to acquire 10 new customers? Are you going to try to book a job with a particular client? Are you going to try and earn a certain amount of income between now and the end of the year? What? is your primary objective or what are your primary objectives? And the most important thing when you're sitting down to think through this is to not limit yourself. I don't want you to sit down and think about, I'd really love to accomplish this, but 2020. I'd really love to get this thing done, but COVID. And then you talk yourself out of it before you even get started. So. The most important part of this is going to be honesty. Honesty and hope. Because this doesn't have to be the lost year. You need to get very clear about what you are trying to accomplish. Otherwise, you are not going to be able to track your progress. You are not going to be able to measure your results. And you're also not going to be able to determine clear tactics for getting you there. Has this scenario ever played out for you? Hey, what'd you do today? Well, I was really busy, actually. I feel like I got a lot of things done. Oh, yeah? Like like what? What did you get accomplished today? Um, well, and then you don't really know. Because you just spent eight hours in the office doing all kinds of stuff, but none of that stuff was targeted towards a specific objective. And so it was eight hours of busy work instead of eight hours of intentional work. It was doing things for the sake of doing things versus doing things for the sake of a clearly defined goal and objective. It was making yourself feel good because, hey, I went into the office today and got some stuff done. But if it doesn't bring you any closer to what you are actually trying to accomplish, then what did you really do? You spend hours mindlessly on tasks with no end goal in mind. And that is why your business is stuck. And that is why 2020 probably feels like the last year. So what I want to do is break this down a little bit further. Now, I, I listed off a few different objectives at the beginning. So let's stick with the objective of getting a new demo. And let's just say for the fun of it that that demo is going to be for documentary and in-show narration. Okay? Now we have a very clear objective. By December 31st, 2020, I am going to have a new demo in the documentary and in-show narration genre. Okay, we've got a clearly defined goal. Now, let's break that down into some sub-goals that you can put underneath of it. So what might that look like? Well, one of the things you might want to do is narrow down who's going to be the perfect coach for this genre. One of those things might be determining who your demo producer is going to be. And maybe a third sub-goal would be setting a budget for the total investment that is going to be required to achieve this goal. Okay, so now we've got a little bit clearer picture of what it is we're trying to accomplish, right? We've got a clearly defined objective, and we've got several benchmarks that are going to help to get us there. The next step is creating tactics that have purpose. This is how you are going to work with intention. So with those three sub-goals that we just mentioned, what are some things that you could do to achieve those sub-goals? 
Well, maybe the first thing you're going to do is speak with a few colleagues who have demos in the documentary and in-show narration space, and you're going to find out who they coached with. Have some conversations. Start doing a little bit of research so that you can determine who's the best coach. You know, don't just go with the first name that comes to mind, maybe, but actually do a little bit of research to make sure that you're getting the best one. Maybe you're going to listen to some demos from some of the different producers that you're considering and and try to figure out from listening to those demos which one sounds the best. And maybe you're going to do a little bit more research in that space as well. What about mapping out a timeline for when you want to get this complete? And that includes coaching, recording, and production. And so, yeah, we said at the beginning that we were going to have this demo done by the end of the year, the end of 2020. But maybe you're going to do X number of weeks worth of coaching, and then that's going to result on a record date that's going to happen around this time, and then that leaves this much time for production, so mapping out an actual timeline. You could create a budget and a plan for how much money you need to set aside each week for this particular investment. And by the way, investment, that is a strategic choice in language. This is not an expense. This is not a cost, because those are often viewed in a negative way. We want to see this as an investment in your business. This is an investment that is going to produce a return. And maybe the fifth thing that you could do is is map out a plan for how you're going to generate the extra revenue required. So now we've taken this great big goal of getting this new demo done by the end of the year, which felt maybe a little bit overwhelming at first. We've come up with a few measurable sub goals. And now we've created a list of tactics that are going to help to get us there. And now when we go into the office, we can work very strategically because we are working towards a goal. We have something that we can measure. Saying I want a new demo isn't enough. It's not going to motivate you because it's not specific enough. And it's probably going to overwhelm you if you don't have a plan for how you are going to get there. How are you supposed to spend eight hours a day working with purpose if you don't even know what the purpose is? So for me, I went through this exact exercise. I decided that I wanted to get an in-show narration documentary demo done this year. And after asking around, I determined that Tom Pinto was the best choice for who I was going to coach with. And I have been working with Tom for three months now, doing two sessions a month, coaching for documentary and in-show narration. I already decided that Uncle Roy was going to be my demo producer. And I've had that conversation with Tom Pinto as well. And he was in agreement that that was a a solid choice. And we now have a timeline in place where in September, we're going to do two more coaching sessions. And then hopefully by October, if everything goes well, we're going to be ready to record the demo so that I can have it by the end of the year. So I know what I'm talking about because this is exactly what I've done. All of the steps that I just walked you through. And this allows me to make sure that every day that I'm going into the office, I am working with purpose because I have a very clearly defined objective. 2020 is not going to be a lost year for me. 2020 is going to be the year that I finally move towards what is my dream genre of doing documentary and in-show narration. 2020 doesn't have to be the lost year. There's still plenty of opportunities out there. There are still voice actors that are booking work every single day. There are still projects that are happening every single day. As the economy reopens, people are getting busier and people need you. All you have to do is know how to get out there and find the work. If you've got professional training, demos, and a home studio, but you're still not booking, the problem is likely with your marketing, and the good news is that is something that we can fix. VoiceOver Marketing Playbook version 2.0 is a step-by-step, easy-to-follow marketing course that is going to give you a clear plan for finding your own leads, building your own client base, and becoming the consistently working voice actor that you want to be. And it is possible to do it, even in the midst of what we are living through in 2020. VoiceOver Marketing Playbook is available from September 16th through the 25th, 2020. This is the last time the course is going to be offered this year and details are available at voiceovermarketingplaybook.com. Playbook is a video course. Once you sign up, you get instant access, lifetime access. You can watch the videos right away, as many times as you want, as often as you want. This is a course that is going to make you a stronger, more confident, more effective 
marketer. Again, registration is September 16th through the 25th, 2020. And the details are available at voiceovermarketingplaybook.com. That's voiceovermarketingplaybook.com. Now, back to our show. So, just for the fun of it, let's do another one. Let's say you want to acquire 10 new voiceover clients before the end of 2021. So that's going to be your primary goal. What's the next step? Let's come up with a couple of sub-goals that we can break that down into. So maybe one of them is going to be determining the genre that you want to find these clients in. Are they going to be in animation or corporate or e-learning or commercial or does it even really matter to you? Although I do think that getting a little bit more specific can make it a little bit easier. So determining the genre, that could be one of your sub-goals. Make a list of brands, products, or services you'd like to work with. This is something that I do often. I keep a notebook and I, I think about the brands that I use, the, the services that I use, the products that I use, the, the brands that I enjoy, the sectors that I'm passionate about, because those are all logical options for me to reach out to from a marketing standpoint. So make that list. Maybe that's number two. And maybe you want to consult with a coach on creating a solid marketing strategy. How am I going to get to these 10 new voiceover clients by the end of 2021? Now that you've got your sub goals, you can set some tactics to help you achieve them. So what could those look like? Maybe one of them is hiring a freelancer to do lead generation for you. One of the smartest things that I ever did for my business, because what is one of the most time consuming aspects of marketing? Actually getting out there and finding the leads. Maybe the second thing is going to be setting a goal for contacting 10 new leads a day and you're making a decision that you're going to do it via LinkedIn and email marketing. Maybe you're going to create a targeted Instagram campaign that is aimed at a specific brand or a specific product or service that you're interested in working with. Maybe one of the things on your list is going to be to find an accountability partner, somebody who is going to check in with you each and every week to make sure that you are doing the things that you need to be doing. Accountability is unquestionably the difference maker between success and failure. Maybe one of the strategies is going to be creating video versions of your demos that you're going to share across your social media platforms because it becomes more content that you can put out while you're in the midst of this marketing push. And maybe the last thing on your list, you're going to use a CRM to set a schedule for regular follow-up. What I want you to understand is that the purpose of this type of exercise is to take your big goals and break them down into bite-sized, actionable pieces, and those become your daily tactics, okay? So that's going to reduce the overwhelm, it creates a new level of focus, and it ensures that you're working with purpose and intention. Earlier, we talked about spending eight hours in the office and not really knowing what you accomplished. We don't want that, right? We want to make sure that you are moving in the right direction. Doing it this way gives you something that you can measure daily, something that you can measure weekly, boxes that you can tick off, that confirm that you're moving in the right direction, that confirm that you're working with purpose. When you are an employee and you're working at a nine to five, you have a very clear job description, right? Most of us have been there. Some of you might still be there. You have a set of tasks that you're responsible for. You probably have a manager who is checking in on you. Maybe you have meetings or weekly email checks or something like that that makes sure that you are doing what you're paid to be doing, right? Well, here's the thing. You're a VOpreneur now. You are the manager. You are the boss. You are the CEVO, the chief executive voiceover for your company. Every hour that you spend working each day should be filtered through the lens of your goals. Every task that you do should be done with purpose, with intention. Otherwise, you are just wasting time, and time is the one commodity that you can't get more of. 2020 doesn't have to be the wasted year, and if you have felt like that, and if you have treated it like that up to this point, what you've lost, well, we're nine months into the year, right? We're, what, six and a half, seven months into this pandemic. Have you lost all that time? 
It's time that you can't get back. But what you can do is keep yourself from losing more. Think about it. What is your primary objective? How are you going to recover the lost year? How are you going to change the narrative and do something great for your business before the ball drops on New Year's Eve? I believe that there is still time to do it, and that is why I am working towards certain objectives in my own business. I don't want 2020 to be the lost year. Maybe my business looks a little bit different now than it did in February, but it doesn't mean that my business needs to be gone. Pivot. Adapt. But most importantly, change the narrative. Stop thinking about 2020 as the lost year. Stop focusing on all of the opportunities that didn't pan out. Stop focusing on the work that you've lost. Stop focusing on the clients that have shut down and start thinking, how do I recover? How do I move in a different direction so that I can still make some amazing things happen this year? That is a so much better use of your time. Think about those primary objectives, break them down, create the tactics. Let's all do something amazing this year. Want to listen to past episodes of the podcast? Want to get caught up? Need some advice, some inspiration? Looking for some help with a specific topic? Head over to the website at vopreneur.com. You can check out every previous episode of the podcast, and it's all searchable as well. That is at vopreneur.com. Once again, thank you for leaving your reviews on Apple Podcasts. I love reading your reviews, so take a minute to do that this week. It would be greatly appreciated. Guys, thanks so much for listening. I'll catch you on the next one. The Everyday Vopreneur Podcast. Available everywhere fine podcasts are given away for free. Mostly. We think your voiceover demos are your number one marketing tool, and you need to display them on your website in a way that works on any device or browser. Voice Sam is the player producers love. Plus, it offers tools that can improve your email signature, quickly create a one page website and much more. Sign up now at voicesam.com slash Mark Scott and get three months of the bass player for the price of one. That's voicesam.com slash Mark Scott for full details and to sign up. And see. And that's a wrap. Thanks for hanging in. Thanks for hanging out. Want more Vopreneur goodness? Jump online at vopreneur.com.